for jobs for New Zealanders through trade. Thank you. Mr Speaker. Uh, James Shaw. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister recently posted a beautiful photo of himself on social media. He was standing on the beach on a calm, clear Auckland night. And what made this all the more remarkable was that at the exact same time, the 1.3 million residents of Auckland were also experiencing one of the most violent thunderstorms in recent memory. So just as there were two Aucklands that night, there are also two different New Zealands in our country today. There is a New Zealand of calm nights and clear skies, a New Zealand in which the national government is delivering for New Zealanders, a country of economic growth and a brighter future. And then there is the country that most of the rest of us actually live in. It's a country that this government does not like to talk about a country in which private sector wages are declining in real terms. Disposable household income is declining. Productivity is declining. People are working harder for longer hours just to stand still. There's a New Zealand which is the greatest place in the world for kids to grow up, and there is the New Zealand in which kids are living in cars and garages. How? How did we get to this place in our history where New Zealanders share the same country but live in different worlds? How? And it hasn't happened overnight. I mean, the truth is that we have been growing apart as a country for decades now. And what's driving this division is a political and economic system that is disconnected from the values of most New Zealanders. Instead of investing in business, instead of investing in people and technology, New Zealanders' money is inflating away in a speculative housing bubble, to the point where the value of our residential housing stock has increased by almost a trillion dollars over the course of the last 17 years. National's trillion dollar housing debt is now worth more than eight times as much as the share market. And that is why an empty home in Auckland earns more in capital gains across one year than the average household income. But the government says everything's fine. And yet every winter, 1,600 people die in New Zealand because their houses are too cold and too damp because they cannot afford to heat them. And they say, everything's fine. New Zealanders were told last week that our drinking water is amongst the least safe in the developed world. Over three quarters of a million New Zealanders are being supplied with drinking water that may not be safe to drink. Last year, 5,000 residents of Havelock North were violently ill and three died because their water was contaminated. In Dunedin, people are boiling their water as we speak. But if private companies want to take clean water out of our aquifers, bottle it and sell it off overseas, they can have it for free because they say everything's fine. 90,000 children in New Zealand live in poverty. Over 40,000 people are homeless and half of those are families with children. But they say everything's fine because this government has a brilliant plan to solve this problem. They're going to find the parents. The mental health system has been gutted and we have one of the highest teenage suicide rates in the world. And this government has spent all year fighting to prevent a public inquiry into the sexual and physical and psychological abuse of the 100,000 children who were raised in state care. And now we know why. Because the solution, or their solution, to the problem of troubled children is boot camps. And they say, everything will be fine. Mr. Speaker, the reason that I am in politics, the reason that the Green Party is in Parliament, and the very reason that our government actually exists is to solve the big, hard problems, not to airbrush them out of existence and pretend that everything is fine. At this election, the Green Party will 
fight and campaign on real solutions to the real challenges that the real New Zealand faces. That is why we need to change the government, and change is coming. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Nikki Wagner. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I